Coming up on today's Nightly News. Half of British voters would choose to leave the EU in referendum. The EIB loan enables Ford to manufacture new Ford Transits in Turkey. And why the Save Our Sugar campaign? In our legislation section, consular protection for citizens of the Union abroad. And in our letters, just who the hell do you think you are? I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. Half of British voters would choose to leave the European Union if they were offered the choice in a referendum, a poll has found. The survey will fuel the growing political debate about Britain's future place in the EU, which has seen even cabinet ministers suggesting that the UK would prosper outside of the Union. British voters were also gloomy about the future of the EU, with 65% saying they are pessimistic about the Union's perspectives, while only 22% were optimistic. Now, it's hardly surprising, you've got multinational corporates dodging taxes whilst the middle classes get reduced services. David Cameron is cutting UK public spending to the bone whilst proposing some limp-wristed budget freeze for Brussels. It's little wonder than people like you and me, well, well we've had enough. On the 18th of October 2011, the European Investment Bank announced the proposal to lend up to 200 million euros to Ford in order to help upgrade their facility in Turkey. In addition to manufacturing the new Ford Transit in Turkey, on the 6th of August 2012, Ford announced that they would shortly be building their new heavy truck, the Cargo Latin, in the same factory. Now, the unit website was contacted earlier today by Tim Holmes, Executive Director at Ford Motors, in relation to this particular story. It appears that some of the key facts were inaccurate, and Tim has instructed the Ford UK press office to help us refine the story. So, a big thanks to Ford for helping us drill down to the detail on this one, and you can find the updated story, it's on the front page of theunit.com. Save Our Sugar is a campaign and website created to bring transparency to the debate on sugar and cane refiners in Europe. Now, due to European policies, this sector is currently only operating at about 60% of capacity. Uh, sugar prices in Europe are 46% higher than the rest of the world, and prices have risen nearly 50% in the last 12 months. Now, sugar is a key raw material in many foods, so this translates into higher food prices for everyone across the board. Mm, sweet. More legalese from our research department. Today, in our legislation section, we have a report on consular protection for EU citizens when abroad. According to Article 23 of the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union, Every EU citizen is entitled to protection by the diplomatic or consular authorities of any member state when that citizen is in a third country where that citizen's nation state is not represented by diplomatic or consular authorities. <gasps> the Stockholm programme, as well as the European Parliament, both call for common concepts in consular protection in order to facilitate the access of EU citizens to their rights, including the right to protection in third countries. Well, I'm still pretty sure that I'll be asking for the British Embassy the next time that I get arrested in Trinidad and Tobago, however. Dear Sirs, I am writing to the unit because today I am Mr Angry. I logged on to my digital banking facility with the Royal Bank of Scotland to be presented with the following message. If you have accounts with RBS England and Wales which are subject to the European Commission requirement to sell part of our UK banking business, dot, 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 yada, yada, the letter goes on to say, it would appear that the sale to Santander was not a voluntary one and that our hand is being forced by the European Commission. I understand that this comes from some notion or regulation about illegal state aid, but this is ridiculous. Now, the full letter, which was sent in by Mr Angry, is on our website. <clears throat> and I have to say, I love this. 
We need more letters like this. Perhaps one ending, yours sincerely, furious of Market Drayton. Please do keep your letters coming. I interviewed Dr Eric Edmund today, formerly of the Monetary Policy Committee for the Bank of England, and I put Andrew Borman's question to Eric and got a very interesting answer. So, watch the new Eurocom programme for that interview and I'll keep you posted here. That's all from me from the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news, stories and information on our website www.theunit.com you can get in touch with us there and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the EUnit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. Finally, of course, you can join me and the rest of our team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus anytime. Rick Timmis for the Nightly News. I'll see you soon.